Let's create some dust for our next particle example. This is going to be basically the idea is to have that environmental dust that's just blowing through a scene. When you create, once we go through the steps on this one, it'll be something you can use for any scene. You can just simply change up the type of texture or the color that you're trying to get. But the general idea is that you'll be able to create that kind of extra atmospheric element inside of your levels. For this one, let's go ahead and go to our hierarchy and create. We'll just make another particle system. And let's call this one dust. Over inside of your particle folder, you do have that one particle, which looks like this. We'll turn on the alpha. So you have this element right here. We're going to use the uh, dust materials. So I'll click on the dust and choose your render rollout. We'll just left click and drag the dust material over to the material slot. There we go. So we've got that kind of darker um, material right there. And if you notice our tint color currently, we have this one at like a soft brownish orange with the alpha turned almost all the way down. Alright, we just want it to be a very soft kind of fill. We don't want it to be too noticeable, but we do want it to be something we can use uh, like m in thick and thin places uh, with a lot of the, uh, the dust elements. Alright, so getting started with, let's go ahead and go over to the, uh, the render rollout. Let's make sure we finish off this element. The uh, sort mode, let's be sure that we do it by distance. Since we know this is going to be a little bit larger if it's going to cover a whole scene, then we do want to make sure we're kind of getting our distance right for what's in front of and behind the other one. The max particle size, let's go ahead and do one. We want to make sure that the particle can be the full uh, size of the screen. Alright, so going back up to the very top, the, uh, the duration doesn't really matter, we don't have an animation, but we'll set it to 1 and leave it on looping for this one. The uh, the start delay, we can leave it 0, the start lifetime, um, that one it's basically going to be how long is it lasting and uh, let's see how long we've got here. That 5 seconds is going pretty far, so we'll see how it, how it does once we add our shape size and then kind of get that dimension set in place and everything for it. The uh, start speed, we don't want to have a constant same speed, we want to make at least a, a random variable between two. So we'll do the random between two constants. And uh, for this one, let's go ahead and just go for about a two and a four, maybe two and a five, let's see. Oh, actually I've got the wrong one here. Uh, start lifetime is what we were supposed to be going for, uh, the constant for that one. So start lifetime, let's do... Again, this one will go for about a 3, and we'll go for a 5. There we go. Let's see if that goes a little too quick. Might be a little too quick. We'll go for 4 and a 5 on the start lifetime. And then the start speed, let's see how that looks. Start speed, random 2. It's going, now this is kind of like a, the snow one if you've already done that one in that there'll be a little bit of a variance on on a one versus the other that way instead of being all moving at the same time you have that little bit extra um, momentum for it for the uh, the start size let's go ahead and change this up as well we'll do the two constant on it and the start size let's go ahead and make this actually a little bit larger we want these to kind of be a big billowing object so we'll do a start size of 15 to 25 so notice when you get them larger, you're actually you you kind of connect them together, so it feels like there's a lot more happening right there. All right. For the rotation, instead of being that same piece going across, we'll do kind of like our standard that we've been doing is zero to three sixty. That way, the start direction is just enough different that you never really notice the texture itself being repeated. The start color that we have right now, we've got white on here, but we could actually take this to a little bit darker. You could also, if you wanted, you could change uh, just depending on what type of, you know, if you want it to be a chemical, you could turn it to a, a green or an orange or a yellow if you wanted. I'm going to take this to a little bit of a brown, and then we'll darken it up a little bit here. There we go. So it's going to be a little bit more like dust, so we'll have some brown mixed in with the black. And for the uh, uh, for the alpha, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it all the way up. So my numbers will go for like a uh, we'll say 130 
120 and 90 and then 255 for the alpha all right and then we'll go ahead and just keep it at local um, this is just intended to be in one spot and it blows across the scene our shape I'm going to just drop to the shape first because we need to go ahead and change this out we don't want it going upwards like this um, and we also don't want it being a cone we want to go for a box and the box shape the size let's go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger than our square our square if you remember is about a 20 by 20 so if we were to put this at about 50 by 50 so we make it a little bit larger than the box let's see how that looks might be even still a little too small for the box we could go we'll try a hundred by a hundred so that's going to be a little bit closer to what we're going to hopefully be uh, going for right there okay so with that let's go ahead and go to our emissions the emission part we currently have 10 but let's go for a hundred here there we go so we're trying to go for enough that we've got a lot of stuff in a distance like far far from there and close it's just the whole thing is just kind of filled with some smoke and uh, uh, some dust and everything we're, we need to start kind of moving it in a direction with a velocity but we also need to start um, keeping it from popping so we'll change the uh, the color for the lifetime alright so let's go ahead and just go down to here we'll go our color over lifetime and this one we'll do similar like we've done before we'll have a we'll put two points up here for our alpha remember just left click on them to make them I'm going to click on my edges over here and just take them down to zero and zero there you go now all of a sudden instead of that popping now we have just kind of a nice smooth fade in fade out which is working pretty good right there alright so the next thing we want to do we want to try to make sure that we're looking at a uh, um, a size variance like right now that's all generally the same size when it's being created so it looks more like just steam going up across um, so on the let's see our size over lifetime let's go ahead and click on that and then we'll do instead of just a curve let's go ahead and do two curves and I'm gonna open my editor up right here we'll keep it on the size we'll keep it at one but instead of doing uh, a straight across where it's the same size and doesn't grow or shrink let's actually drop a point in a little tick point here I'm gonna right click and do add key and I'm just gonna make a key point that goes down so notice if you look in so what I'm doing right now is I'm looking over in this area as I'm dragging up and down and I'm just trying to make sure I don't want it solid thick I just want it to kinda of go a little bit faded away so again we'll put one here and then we'll add a uh, a key down here at the bottom as well so let's see if we can get a there we go so we don't want completely to lose it but we do want enough showing around there there we go so randomly placing it I'm just kinda looking over here to see it but we're looking at about a point two and then up here we're looking at about a point seven point seven five somewhere in the middle between those two so this giving notice it's less than the amount of what we see but it's also starting to feel more like dust versus looking like uh, smoke coming up from it alright so after that one we want to do some rotation over lifetime let's find our rotation over lifetime here and for that let's just put in a two constants just for two random variables we'll go for about a negative um, actually let's see we'll go for about a 80 to negative 80 there we go so now we're getting a nice little rotation happening in here keeps kind of thinning it out making it look more and more like the dust which is a good thing All right so once you have that one I'm gonna go ahead and close this roll out that way I'm back into this one over here Okay. So the next thing we want to do, we can actually have a little bit of a movement to it if you want it to actually move in a direction. So for instance, the dust right now is just going uh, 
just going straight up this way, but if we want to start forcing it over to the side, we can actually start creating a little bit extra to it. So let's take the dust part here and let's make a we'll do force over lifetime. Actually, let's do a uh, we'll do a velocity over lifetime here. And let's set the instead of a single constant, we'll do a random between. And then for the dust, if you want to have a little bit of a movement left and right or up and down, we'll do the world coordinate for it. We'll just do a negative We'll see what a negative 1 has effect on it. Let's see here. So negative 1 to 1. And then we'll do a, a negative 1 to 1 here. There we go. So now it's starting to look like some good dust being pushed in and around. And uh, actually, if we wanted to even take it further, Let's see, that's going to be... Oh, okay, so we got Y on that one. I'm going to do a... We'll actually make sure the Y is on this. We'll do the negative 1 and 1 on the Z. There we go. So now we've got more sideways movement. And if you want, you could even do very similar to a, uh, to, to a, a storm type, as you can do it all in very intentional one direction. So notice we can have all of this moving one direction. And you could actually say that you want to force everything. We'll get, we can leave this at zero. And we could say that we just want it to move on the x. And we could do a, a negative 5 and a negative 10. And then you can have it where it actually is just blowing by one direction. You could leave it at zero and zero. And you could have the dust just staying in the same spot. So that should give you a nice idea of how to create kind of just an environmental dust. One that if you were the player, for instance, and your player is right here looking at an entire environment, it's going to feel like you're in the middle of a very um, strong dust storm. And again, you can change out your color if you want to lessen it uh, on the gradients. Or if you want to feel like you're really in a serious storm right here with dust blowing everywhere, then it's a uh, pretty nice effect to it. Alright, so there you go. We want to just take our dust, we're going to left click and drag it over. Oh, be sure that you set your position though before you make a prefab. We'll do zero, 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 and then we'll take our dust and we'll drag it over to the dust folder and have our prefab with it. Alright, so that'll finish off dust, and then again, if you feel like changing out colors, changing size, feel free to jump in there and just add and uh, manipulate it until you get exactly what you want for the scene you're working on.